real estate, real estate. sales, sales. sales. Marketing. marketing, full circle conversations, full circle conversations. with Andres Olaya. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. I have with me my good friend, Arturo Gandini. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Of course, man. He flew in all the way from Miami, Florida to Paradise. Yeah. We're here in Medellin, Colombia. And tell us, tell us what brought you here to Colombia. Everything, bro. The views, you know, the fucking girls, of course, beautiful girls, are very nice girls. Um, networking. Like people like yourself again. We haven't seen each other in what two years? Yeah, it's been about three going years. on three years. Going, yeah, going on, on three, three years. years. And you know, I was excited for you to come because this is first time here in Medellin, Colombia. Everyone that comes loves this place. And <clears throat> me personally, everyone watching, hit me up. If you guys are in town, hit me up. We'll come, I'll show you around, and we can do things together. And I'm trying to get a lot of people to move down here. So let's start there. Let's talk about how things are right now in the US, right, in Miami. Miami to Medellin, big difference, so. <clears throat> so, in, in the United States, first of all, if you're fucking middle class, you're gonna be poor. That's the honest truth, okay? Because right now we just went from gas three, four years ago, was $2.50, close to three bucks, now we're at seven. In Florida, it's at 10 in, um, in California. So everything has fucking double or triple. You know, they have out saying, Inflation is only 7%, 8%, 9%. But when you actually, if you have, anybody that has common sense, if they go to the store, the freaking, I don't know, rice that they used to buy for $2, now it's six, you know? And then they, the TV tells them, oh, inflation is only 9%. It's easy. People used to buy a fucking Mac chicken for 99 cents, now that's just like $1.89, you know? And then people still live, oh, the highest inflation we ever had, and just double, and they think it's nine percent. Like people are stupid, bro. Yeah, that's the honest truth. Most people they don't really, they don't really understand what's really going on. They don't. They live in La La Land. They live in. It's the truth. Yeah, right now, I mean, especially in Miami, right where you're at. I mean, rents have, no exaggeration, they've doubled. Where you were paying eight or uh, four thousand for a nice place, now that place is eight, ten thousand. And I've had a lot of friends that come from there tell me the same thing so what i'm hearing you say is yeah i mean leave miami because you're getting inflated on right and you're thinking about possibly be doing a switch correct because of that same reason well for a lot of reasons i mean first of all i love miami right you now i like the nightlife um i'm a show off you know i fucking love to show off i never right. have shit right so when right. i have a little bit of money i show it off okay so i like miami um, I also, you know, I live in Tampa. I have another property in Tampa. But Medellin, I mean, dude, like, I hear, you know, there's a lot of crime, there's a lot of this, that. It's nice. It's, it's, it's nice. beautiful. It's lovely. Um, especially if you're working, if you're working from home, why not? Right. You know, here you're paying, what, two grand for a really nice place. Over there in Miami, the same place, like eight grand. Exactly. So it's like... It's a no-brainer, plus me, I don't really have nothing holding me there besides family. I'm not married, okay, right. you know, I'm single, whatever. Right. My mom, my sister, they live over there. Other right, than right, that, right. I don't have nothing. You know, so coming here, experiencing outside of the U.S., it builds you. Exactly. It builds your character. For the people watching and listening right now, because <clears throat> like you said, they talk a lot about the crime, that it's dangerous, that you're going to get robbed, it's South America, the government, this, that. What was your first impression? Because you you and I were, were texting and it's like, oh my God, you know, it's amazing. But what were the first, let's say the top three things that initially stood out, you've been here four days. So what were the main things that stood out for you where it's like, it's really appealing to you? What's really appealing to me, to be honest, is how much better it is than the U.S. when it comes to not only not only uh, money-wise, okay, right. financially, but for example, the mall. We went to the mall. Okay, the right. mall is better than the best mall in Tampa. Right. You know, it's like three times as big. Yeah. Four times as beautiful when it comes to the store, the decor. The girls also, you know, they're very pretty and they're very humble. So. Everything is just beautiful about Colombia. What is there not the food? Okay, the beauty. Uh, so the 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 lifestyle here, right? You can go out to the mall, enjoy it. Number two, the food. The food, amazing. I'll say something about the food here, though, guys. 
you know, it's not a nutrition podcast, nothing like that. But here in the United States, look, they're going to feed the cows corn, soy, a lot of different things that they're not supposed to eat. They're going to cook everything also in all these garbage oils, canola oil, uh, corn oil, all these things. Here, you can buy products that are raw. In the United States, you can't even get raw milk. Here, you go to a farm, you have the right contacts. You can get fresh milk, fresh cheese, real organic butter, and you taste the difference. The fruits also, because over there, they're all profit-driven, 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 so they're gonna sell you whatever they wanna sell you. So I'll tell you something, like I'll input something about that. Yeah. What you're talking about right now, that's like best case scenario, okay? Yeah. Right now, Bill Gates came out with fucking synthetic meat, okay? He wants to fucking sell synthetic meat, um, and he already pushed it. Right. Okay, he's pushing a synthetic, people who don't know what a fucking synthetic meat is, it's pretty much meat made in a lab. It's not even a fucking cow getting fed, you know. Um, grass. Correct, or not even not even grass, that's like the best case. It's not even a cow that is being fed like hormones. Right. Okay, I know cows and pigs, they fucking, for example, pigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pigs, I don't eat. I don't eat pork. I used to love pork. I don't eat it anymore. My body can't take it. Not for right. a reason. I just my body can't take it. Why? This is what they do. Okay. In the states, it's very big. Now it's big in like Peru, Colombia, Bolivia. What do they do? The pig takes a shed. They grab the shed. They inject it with fucking nutrients. They give it back to the pig. Okay. And why? For mass production. I don't eat pig. Right. Okay. What are they doing with meat now? What are they doing with uh? with cows or whatever it is that you eat, okay, when it comes to meat. Now they're saying there's not enough. What do they want? It's about money. So they're creating a fucking meat, the little cell, they got a fucking cow, the little cell that they build in the fucking, in, in the lab, they can build it. So now you're actually getting fucking meat that's been built in a lab. It's synthetic meat, it's not, it's not natural. You know, so what type of problem are people gonna have? Look at the US. Okay, US has, what, 60% of the population is close to being obese. Okay, and, and me sure. saying obese is fucking, it's, it's sugar coat and they're fucking fat. They're fat as fuck, they're fucking fat pigs. They don't take care of themselves. Yeah. And that's the honest truth. That's how it is, people don't take care of, they don't love themselves, man. That's true, I mean. They don't I go to the gym, they're fucking lazy. You know, they eat whatever. They, oh, the government said it's okay. It's FDA approved for synthetic <laughs> milk. Woo! You know? And you got a good point. Crazy. You got a good point because I was over there and just people, I, w I was disappointed because all, all the people that eat bad and they're just programmed. All these companies, they're brainwashed the kids, uh, the Oreos, the Cheetos, the cereal, the McDonald's, all that stuff. See, you, you don't have that much here. You're away from all those things, all those companies, because they're just profit driven. No, not only that. I mean, so I eat <clears throat> fucking shit food, okay? So, like, if I'm hungry, yo, I'm gonna pass by McDonald's, get me a fucking McDouble or whatever it is, okay? But what happens is, yeah, you can go ahead and do that if you're fucking, have fucking God given, I wanna say, like a body and you also take care of yourself. You can do it, but if you would just want to fucking go to Mickey D's every fucking day and then say, why am I fat? Yeah. Bitch, you know what you're fat, <laughs> you know? So people that's need to take care of themselves. Yeah, that's you know, true. you can eat like shit, but do you also know that your metabolism will process, if you go to the gym and you eat, you can eat two boxes of pizza or whatever, within the next hour after you work out, your body processes faster. It actually accelerates your metabolism, which throws everything away, keeps the small little nutrients that you that you have on that pizza, everything else is disposed. So once you, once you start understanding that, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You know, you wanna eat like shit, hey, that's fine, you can eat like shit, but you also have to fucking work out to carry yourself. Right. You know, so. So number two, food. To talk about the difference, right? Food, lifestyle food, third thing here for the people. Third thing, um, girls. The women. The women. The women are obviously, Colombia is known for the most beautiful. Colombia is known, okay, from what I have heard, for two things. Where are you from? Just so the people know. So it's not biased. He's not Colombian. Just uh, I'm not Colombian. I'm Peruvian. Peruvian. It's Peruvian. It's yeah. Peruvian. I'm, Peru I'm a little bit mixed, but I'm, I, okay. I was born in Peru, so I can okay. Peruvian. Okay. Okay. So, and I have traveled. Okay, I've been to uh, Romania, I've been to Kosovo, I've been to Hungary, I've been to Albania. Um, I've been all the way to, to uh, Eastern Europe. Okay, I've been to Spain. Um, and Colum I've been to Cuba. Cuba. Okay. Colombia by far, Russia, Colombia by far, 
without being biased, By no okay, bias, no bias. bias, okay, is between Colombia and Cuba when it comes to the most beautiful women that you've seen, that you've traveled. Correct, the most beautiful woman, okay? okay. And what makes them beautiful, in my opinion, is not only that they're like their bottom, they like to take care of themselves, right? Okay, it's the way they treat a man. The way so, for example, men. yeah, for example, you can go anywhere, okay? The girl can have nothing, they still, or they can have everything, right? Okay, and they still treat you like a fucking woman. You know, I think, and I have a lot of Colombian friends uh, back in the States, and I think that the culture, okay, yes. they were. Colombians by nature, they're just happy people. They're very happy. Right, right. They can have nothing, but they're happy. Right. Hey, what's up? Hey, it's good. I don't have money. Bro, you ask a homeless, they will give you a little bit of money. Right, okay? right, right. And that's what separates Colombia and Cuba, in my opinion, from most countries. You go to Peru, you ask somebody for the time, they're like, don't talk to me. They yeah. run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fucking ignorant. Yeah. Okay, and I'm talking about my own country. It's fucking ignorant. It's right. fucking ignorant. Right, right, right. Why? Because the culture is, is very culturally different, you know? In my opinion, um, I mean, growing up and growing up multicultural with Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Colombians, Dominicans, whatever, out of the whole crowd, Colombians stand out the best. Colombians. Looks, the way they treat you, and they like to take care of themselves. And they're... Their energy. Their energy. Their energy. energy. Yeah. And they're happy yeah. people. Happy people. They're very happy people. I'm sure we have a lot of people wanting to come back now because of that. So lifestyle, food, and the women. You got to come back now for a month. Like you guys, like if you guys want to do it right, the people watching this FYI, because I have people out coming three days, one week, ten days. If you want to do it right, experience it all, and you're not rushing, rushing, rushing. One month. So next time he comes back, he's gonna he's gonna book a month. Yeah. Oh, one thousand. I'll probably book a year. Yeah. I'll probably just move here. Yeah. But the thing is that when I say women, I'm not talking about you know like it's my first time in Medellin. Yes. Okay, I've been to yes. Barranquilla before. Like I told you with a friend. Yeah. I was for two weeks and I went a week uh, to the beach. It was a total different experience. I was with the locals. Right. Okay. Here, where I was staying from, you know what what what, what we talked about earlier. Right. It's paradise. And you know, it's paradise for, I call them geeks, okay? People that can't get fucking girls. Why? Because they can go buy them. Like um, my buddy was saying, you know, he, it's like a fucking, the, the, I mean, I don't want to sound disrespectful to your audience. Yeah, yeah, no, okay? no it's fine. But, it's but it's the reality. Be, We're gonna, this is non-censored. This is the raw truth. That way you guys see it all. Okay, so most Americans, okay, most Americans, that I have met here. They're here, why? Because they can buy fucking prostitutes. They come here, they spend their fucking check from public, $2,000, $3,000. <laughs> they come here, no, it's the truth. No, it's funny. You know, it's they true. come over here, they think they're fucking Mr. Big Dick Pimp <laughs> because in the States, no woman looks at them. It's true. That's the, they have no drive. No. They don't want to do nothing in life. They want to sit at home in their fucking mom's basement. Okay, get fucking, probably a welfare check by, oh, you know, like, I didn't get a job for two right, weeks. Right. Okay, trying to cheat the government. No fucking girl looks at this guy. They have no gain. They don't look good, they're fucking overweight. So they come over here and they take advantage of the fucking people that, the poor people. Right. I have a lot of poor people. And, and that's, I mean, that's, that's a big difference. I didn't know, you know, everybody's like, oh, Medellin, 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 Medellin. So I'm like, damn, what's good about this? I've been right, here right, for a long time. Right, you know, right, oh, you right. gotta go, you gotta go, the women are beautiful. I understood that the women, they're very pretty, but I didn't know they were saying it because they come over here and they fucking buy fucking whores. Right. They buy fucking prostitutes. Right, right, Okay, right. and those are guys that they can't get laid. Exactly. Okay, they go back home and they're under a fucking virgins for two more years, save their fucking paycheck, come back over here. And, and I appreciate, and I appreciate you sharing that because that's that's the ugly truth. What he just said right there, I look down on that because that's not that, that's not the sort of people we want to have, right? I want people that are doing great things, right? I want to connect with good people. Just because you come from the United States and you do that, and the, and the people watching that, you should have come here to do that because that doesn't raise your self esteem. Like you actually lower. I believe the people who do that actually have low self self esteem. They actually lower their self esteem by doing those sort of things, right? 
He's staying at a place, so you gotta. You, when you come, you have to know the place to stay. Where to? It's like any city. You gotta know. You gotta have someone on the ground, know where to move, where to operate. So they were telling him, "Medellin, Medellin," but that's the dark side. That's the ugly side. That you know. That's, that that's, most Americans come yes. here to fucking do. Exactly. I call them little dick geeks, which is what the fuck they are. Exactly. They can't get girls. They don't know how to talk to girls. They don't take care of themselves. Yeah. Now they have a little bit of money. Okay, and they think they're fucking pimps over here. It's so fucking sad. The that. people watching here then, where where should they meet girls, right? Based on your experience here, your limited experience here, where should they meet girls? It's kind of just like the states. Uh, the gym, the mall, fucking going hiking, downstairs. Maybe you're at a restaurant, the server. I don't know. Right, you know, right. different type of woman, you know? Like I said, most guys, they just want to go and fucking, oh, I like her. That's easy. How much? Okay. And they haven't gotten let in fucking five years. Yeah, the fucking penis is rotten. Yeah. And <laughs> it's the truth, man. It's and I don't like that. Like I see, I see guys. I'll tell you one thing. Right. So you know, him and I were going down the elevator, and I saw this old guy. But I promise you, Drew was coming out of his fucking mouth. His what? His what was coming? Drew. Out? Oh, okay. Fucking Drew, 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 Drew. Okay. We're going down. We're going. No, actually, I'm sorry. We're we're going up. We're going towards the elevator, and he was coming out the elevator with a girl that she looked probably like she was like best case scenario she was like 14. wow okay i thought she was 11. wow this girl it was sad to me because you know how when you see on tv right there's girls like when they catch the girls they're prostitutes and they're sad for the first time they're covered up their makeup's all fucked up they're like traumatized that's what this girl looked like bro she had a fucking little a jacket the old fuck was behind her you know just walking like like he's somebody yeah you know and i was like dude like like, can I just knock this guy out? You know, right. for him for him not to ever come to the States, not, not to ever come to Colombia, you know? Right, and right, it's right. fucking sad, bro. It's sad to see that. It's sad to see that a female has to prostitute themselves, okay, to make, you know, dude, a grand, how much they make, right. a grand, two grand, you know, a month, okay, when, what what is minimum minimum wage here? Two hundred fifty bucks, three hundred dollars. Three, yeah, more or less. You know, so you can't survive off of that. Yeah, nobody can survive off of that. You know, so these girls are fucking going out there, and these men taking advantage of them. Right, they take advantage of them, and that's just that, that's just the reality here. But all young, they don't matter. They're just coming here, and they can't get fucking vagina, so they save up their fucking paycheck and they come here to fucking fuck little girls. That's the reality, guys. But moving on here on another subject here, going back to the positive things, right? Because the people that I surround myself with here want to have positive people like Arturo and a lot of the people that you've seen come on the show. You and I, we met about three years ago. Let's talk about the, the circle that you should surround yourself with, right? You don't want to hang out with those people. Anybody who tells you to come down here, do that stuff, you want to avoid them. And... I know people that come down here doing that, and I steer them away from that, but surrounding yourself with great people. You and I, we met about three years ago at a mastermind event. So I want to move to that focus now, right? The power of masterminds. You told me you've been to several masterminds, so have I. Talk to the people here now about the power of that, being surrounded by people that are like-minded, that are going places, that are progressing. Okay, so I have a rule, okay? And this is very well known in the entrepreneurship world. You're the average, and I'm sure they heard it when they were doing it, but they don't, they don't really get it, you know? You're the average of the five people you hang out with, okay? Right. Now, you have to be, you have to choose your friends. Right. For example, if I go to the club, I'm with a guy that doesn't fight and something happens to me, am I really with somebody? I'm with right. somebody that's, that doesn't have your back. You know, regardless, like if, if you bring a friend, okay, if you bring a friend and we all go out, hey, we're all together, you know, so like you have to hang out with people, you have to hang out with people that are like-minded. What I mean is you have to discard weak-minded people. Like when I say weak, I'm not talking about poor. When I say weak, I'm talking about people that don't have ambition. People that say, hey, yeah, I'll do it. You know, a week, you're excited for them. A week later, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. Two months later, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing it. Three years later, they're still doing it. Quote unquote, you know? And you have to be careful who's, who's around you. 
Right. You know, one thing I learned from masterminds, you know, I want to see Dan Pena. Dan Pena, Dan Pena. Tell, tell, tell me about Dan Pena's mastermind because that's an amazing mastermind. That one's rigorous too. That's not like, you know, hey, you know, it's not like fluff. It's like real hard telling you how it is. He's the one who says it too, right? Show me your friends. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, show you your future. Correct. So, I mean, obviously I learned a lot. It's a lot of mindset. Right. You know, like I'll, I'll give you an example. So any type of business, okay, any business, it can be selling cars, it can be Amazon stores, it can be coaching programs, whatever it is, okay? If you don't have the mindset, you're not gonna do one. But my mindset, I mean this, I can show you, hey, A through Z, okay? Like for example, you, when you do your math and you teach people, hey, this is how you do wholesaling, it's gonna cost you 15, 20, 30 grand, whatever it right, is, right. okay, it's gonna cost you X amount of money, but this is what you're gonna make. You know, you're making what? 50, 60, 80 thousand dollars per deal. Right. You know, my first deal I made twenty five thousand dollars. Right. I paid how much for the math? It was like five grand back then. Right. You know, so yeah, I paid five grand. I'm like, what is this? I'm already flipping. So what is wholesaling? They don't really know what wholesaling was. And I, w I think over like a month and a half later, I made twenty five grand. You know, so if you consider, hey, am I gonna get my ROI? Your R there's no ROI that you make over 100% within the first month. You know, people are happy making 10% a year exactly. on whatever they invested. You know, so masterminds are, are extremely powerful. They and cut, there's a shortcut. There's a shortcut. It's a shortcut, and if you're sure in yourself, you're gonna make your money back. 1,000%. So what'd you learn? What was it, what was, Dude, what I takeaways learned? takeaways at, at Dan, let's start with Dan Pena's mastermind, right? Tell them about that. Three takes away, okay. What would it take me to figure it out, best case scenario in five years, I learned it in a week. Okay. One week. One week. Correct. That's all you need. Literally, because he, for example, with Dan Pena, what does he teach us? He teaches you how to buy successful companies with none of your own money. Okay, and since so we're all in real estate, I'm gonna show you how. Right. Pretty much, so you right. know how you put a company under, uh, I'm sorry, you put a property under contract? Right. Okay, it's beat up, whatever, you're gonna sell it to an investor or a high end right. for $60,000 more. Yeah, exactly, or whatever you're gonna find someone sell it to a profit. Correct, yeah. you find it, you sell it for profit. Right, okay, right, it's right. pretty much a flipping a contract, okay? With business, it's almost the same way. How, let's say you have, a, you have your business, right? And I'm like, hey, Andrew, how much you want for your business? Yeah, well, I'm making, you know, five mil, 10 mil a year. Um, I want 20 mil. Right. Okay, you're like, hey, you know, 20, 30 mil. So I'm like, okay, we negotiate. I'm like, okay, I'll agree to your price, 20 mil, but let's do a two year contract. Okay, where, hey, I'm gonna put a down payment of $2 million and I'm gonna pay you, okay, I'm gonna pay you those 18 mil right. within those, you know, within the rest of the two years. Within the two years. Okay, so you're okay because you got your money, we come, obviously, you know, you look for your best interest, which is, hey, none of the money gonna be touched from the company until I get paid, right. obviously, okay? How does that give me leverage? So I buy your company for, let's say, you're making 10 million a year net, okay? You're buying it for 20 million. Okay, right, right, why? Because right. you're buying, you're buying the net income. You can make a right. hundred, a hundred uh, gross. Okay, but you're making ten net. So he teaches, hey, you pay two to three times EBITDA. EBITDA. Okay, that's the, that's the sum. Two to three times EBITDA on good companies, and you only buy good companies. You don't want share companies. Yeah. So okay, that's so gonna you, be around for a long time. That's established. It doesn't even have to be around for a long time. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So this is what this is what he teaches you. So I'll buy. You're making ten million dollars net. We come to an agreement. I'll I'll purchase it for twenty. That's two times EBITDA. Right. Okay. Thank you. I go to another guy. I got, let's say, five guys just like you. Right. Okay. That I'm buying two times the net of what is of what is making. Okay. So it's making ten. I'm paying twenty. So I pay you twenty on paper. I really get right. two. Right. But all that money you're gonna get paid. Right. Okay. I get five other guys. Now I have a company. Now my my company, my shell company, has a company that makes what. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Five, five companies that make 10, that's 50 mil. When you have a company that makes 50 mil, now the EBITDA is five, 10, even 20, 40 times. Right. Why? Because now your company is not a, now my company is not a, it's not a $10 million company, a $20 right. million dollar company. Okay, so what did I do? I put five companies on their contract where the most I spent was 100 mil. Right. Okay, but in two years, when I have five of you, I can sell it for 500 mil. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So he teaches you how to approach this company. He teaches you, hey, 
is better, it, give them whatever they want, okay? Prime is two to three times EBITDA. That's like, right. hey, if the company's making 10 mil net, you can pay them up to 30. Up to 30. Why? Because you already three know times. your exit. Right. Your exit is five to 10 times depending on the industry. Depending so. On it's, a, it's like flipping contracts, wow. but it's the long, the long term. Right. You know, he tells you, hey, you go in, once you hit your mark, get rid of it. Because no company lasts forever. Now, do you, are you owning the companies or you just have them you under that them. period of contractor? You own them okay. on, paper. on paper. It's like a house, you buy a house, right. you really own it's it. It's like an option. Exactly, it's like it's an, an option, option, but anybody can do it. Right. Okay, because why? You and I can make a contract on our hair, Turo, you know, give me 20 mil, I'll give it to you. Right. It works out for you. Exactly. You know? I get 10 people like that. I go to a hedge fund. I'm like, hey, I got, I'm making, you know, $100 million. I owe you guys 100. They're going to give me five. You know, you five, you keep four. Exactly. Yeah. You know, 500 mil, I keep 400. <clears throat> Everybody's happy. You know? You guys get paid. I get paid. The hedge fund get paid. Right. Everybody's happy. So, right, right. That's what I learned in, in, um, in, in England, yeah. I went to Scotland. And how, what does that do to you, right? When you stay there a week, right? What's that experience like? Because that's part of the experience too. Okay, so it's just same like-minded people. You know, so for example, you know, you're explaining your choice. This is what I do. I get a list, I fucking send, you know, 15,000 text messages. You know, you're at least gonna fucking get 10 houses. Right. You know? So just that information is worth money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he's not gonna have to go and fucking Google which, uh, how, how do I get this house? How does negotiation? How, what did I tell them? You know? So it's exactly. gonna shorten. Exactly. What, what will take them years to learn or try to pick things from here and there and there. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They're like, oh, nah, bro, I'll just pick your brain. Oh, nah, bro, I'll just take you to eat. You right, know, and right. they don't really understand. Like, you have to I, invest. Bro, yeah, you have to invest. I get a lot of text yeah. messages, okay? A lot of messages through Instagram. Yeah. Hey, Arturo, I'm gonna be in Miami. Uh, can I pick your brain? What the fuck you mean? You're gonna fucking go in there with a needle and try to pick it? Like, what the, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, the oldest trick like in the, the book. It's like the worst it's way the to worst approach thing you someone. Can do. Yeah, it's the worst thing you can approach you know? to say someone. People that wanna, and, and I get it, we don't come from money. Right, right. You know? So I understand because back then my mind wasn't there. Okay, but what I had to eliminate, I had to literally eliminate 95% of my friends. You know, my circle is very small. Right. Extremely small, okay? Most of my contacts is business. When we get on the phone, hey man, I'm closing this deal. Hey man, I'm looking for this deal. Hey man, what are you doing? Hey, something that is gonna elevate, you know? Whatever I can do for people, bam, whatever you can do, and we elevate each other. Most people like, hey man, uh, what are you doing on Friday night? I'm like, bro, like we just went out last Friday. Right. Yeah, man, but this Friday, like, bro, yeah. you've been doing the same shit since 2010. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's 2022, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're still doing the same thing, so. When you're in that environment with high achievers, okay, you're, you're in an environment where everybody has the same goal, everybody, they will fucking kill you to fucking, you know, you're threatening whatever they wanna achieve, okay? When you're in that environment, you become more aggressive for your goals. You become more ambitious, okay? You guys have a topic that everybody is interested in, everybody in that circle is interested in. You know, I don't know if you ever been with people that are like, oh man, you always talk about money, that's what I get. Or oh, Arturo, you always talk about money, that's all you fucking talk about. I always talk about money. I'm like, that's why Everything the fucking are world, on me. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like health, fucking, if you wanna say love, and money. You know, why the fuck do you go to work? If it's not about money, right. oh, I'm just good with this. Then there, there, People that say I'm okay with X amount, I don't care yeah. what it is, they will never grow. They will yeah. never grow because that's a limited mindset. Right. You right, know? Right, right. I'll tell you something. When I started, I was making ten to fifteen thousand a month, okay, uh, by my rent, from my properties. And I'm like, dude, my friends are making three, four grand a month. My mom makes like twenty five hundred a month. I make the residual, I'm good. Right. Then Peña said, You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Okay, fucking he said, go to places you can't afford, 
okay? Rub shoulders with people that are doing 10 times what you want to do, okay, that are making 100 times more than, than, than whatever you're making, okay? Even if you're, even if you're just, I want to say breaking even at the end of the day, that mindset shift will help you. It's gonna, okay, it's so that's what I did. You. It's gonna exactly, lift you. Yeah. so that's what I did, you know? I went to Miami, I moved to the hottest building in Miami, okay, paying about $8,400 a month, okay? Remember, I was making fucking 15 grand. Right. Okay, paying $8,400 a month, and just by me being around those people, okay, and entrepreneurs, they wanna help you. Why? Because yeah. when they say it's lonely at the top, it's, true, yeah. it's not that it's lonely at the top, it's that we choose not to hang out with people that have a poor mindset. Exactly. You know, because if we could, we'll help you. I know, like... Oh, wait, say that again, say that again, though, because that was great. Wow. Like, I, I, I see it that way, too. The lonely at the top piece. Yeah. Say, that, say it yeah. again. What, it's, not, it's not that it's lonely. It's Correct. That, it's that, what is that? Correct. It's not, it's not that it's lonely. Yeah. It's the fact that we choose, we, we, we just understand that we cannot hang out with certain type of people because it brings you down. Exactly. And unfortunately, most people, most of us, have poor DNA, okay, engraved in us. That's the honest truth. We, sure. we grew up with parents that, like my dad, hey, college, 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 college. Okay, I was like, I fucking, I, I'm good at school, but I fucking, I hate it. You know, why the fuck we have a fucking teacher, business professor, teaching you about business when he never even opened a business. Exactly. You know, like, I, I just don't understand. I remember uh, my finance professor, when I was in college, my finance professor, he asked everybody in class, hey, how many of you guys are making, oh, how many of you guys have $50,000 in your bank account? At that time, you know, I was kind of there. I didn't raise my hand. Right. Obviously, none of the kids raised their hand, so he's like, yeah, if I had 50 grand in my bank account, I'll be in the Bahamas drinking me a Bahama mama. And I'm like, and that teacher loved me. Right, right. Okay, right. he loved me because I always ask questions. You know, he, like, everybody was taught not to ask fucking questions. Just people, yeah. people were scared to ask questions. Exactly. You know, so the guy loved me. He loved to try to explain to me certain things, and I always ask him. You know, like, okay, you're a finance professor. Um, can you tell me what is your retirement plan or what do you have going on? Because for everybody, a finance professor, like, well, he's the goat with money. Right, he's the one who's going to teach me. Like, that's it. I'm gonna how to get out of the to fucking, how to, how, to leave, how, how to leave this fucking shit life. Yeah. Okay, living paycheck to paycheck. Okay, and unfortunately, people don't understand. They don't have the answer. Okay, they're actually a little, they're, they're one step above them. Because these people are gonna do the same thing. They're gonna finish college, they're gonna get a job, they're gonna turn 60, maybe buy a Ferrari at 60, and maybe be with a young girl at 60. You know, I'm like, right. I don't want that shit. You know, I wanna be the fucking 25 year old kid with the fucking Lambo, not the 60 year old guy with a fucking, you know, with the Lambo. Like, the mindset, the mindset, you know? Like, my program that I sell, okay? Yeah. I tell them, listen, if you do everything I tell you, you're gonna get two, three, you're gonna learn how to get two, three hundred thousand on loans, okay, up to a milli, and you can actually grab my information and fucking sell it and make money. Right, right. If you apply what I'm telling you. If you don't, it's gonna, you're gonna throw your money away. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some, somebody that's, that's watching this, they're seeing you, and they wanna learn, right? They say, hey, Arturo, he's got some knowledge here. What do you offer here? for people to change that mindset, to change their financial situation as well too. Okay, so I have a program, it's called Funding Academy. Funding okay. Academy. Correct. What's the website on that? Funding Academy, funding-academy.com. Um, funding-academy.com, we're gonna leave that down Correct. below. Okay, or they can follow me on Instagram. Instagram, what's your handle? We're gonna put your handle too, but what's your Instagram handle so people? At D-T-H-E Arturo Gainvini. Okay. Okay, so, this is what I teach, and it doesn't, and unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, it's only for people that need money in the U.S. or Canada. U.S. or Canada. Correct. Okay. Or if you can purchase a program, learn it, okay, and teach the same thing to business owners in the U.S. and Canada. So all it is is right. this. People don't really know that businesses have um, a credit score. Right. Okay, all businesses have a credit score. It can be good, it can be bad, but they don't know how to build it. Okay, so what do I accelerate it? For example, I kind of fell into this because I was looking for a loan. I think it was like 2000, 
2013, 2014, I was looking for like a, it was like a $1.2 million loan. Right, right, Okay. Right. Hey, you're approved, but um, we need to look at your business credit score. I don't know what the fuck a business credit score was. Right, okay? right. Okay, so after I got, they're like, hey, your business credit score needs to be an 85. I'm like, okay, how did I build it, you know? I paid a company, they're like, okay, it's gonna take about 60 days to build it, but you gotta do this, you gotta give us contacts for this, and we gotta verify that your business is making this much money. Well, by the time everything was said and done, the actual building that I was looking at to purchase, which was 1.2, with the SBA is 10% down, so you know, 120,000 would've got me that apartment. Okay, that apartment actually sold, the guy did, he bought it for 1.2, sold it for 1.5 something. So he made a quick four, 500,000, right. okay? I saw the numbers, I saw everything. I couldn't get the loan, so I was like, I didn't even know business credit score existed, so then I got into it. I learned, I built my business credit, and then I was like, okay, what else can I do? What, what, what else does business credit help, okay? So business credit helps in what? Getting SBA loans. It's you want big small loans? Small business loans. Right, small business loans small in business the States, loans. in the States and in Canada, yeah. okay? A small business loans, it helps you go to the bank and actually get money for a company that never had any income. So for example, if you have a, if you have a kid straight out of high school, right. okay, 18 years old kid, and he's like, okay, I don't wanna go to school, fuck school, I'm broke as fuck, I have no money, how can I get money for my startup, or how can I get money to buy an existing business, how can I get money to buy a building or whatever it is? Okay, so I expedite the process in 30 days. I teach them, I don't do it for them. There's companies that do it for you. Right. Like, hey, I'll do it for you because they don't want to teach your secrets. Exactly. I say, fuck that, I'm giving everything. You're gonna okay? get everything away. Exactly. Here. Part, as that's part of the academy, right? Correct, that's yeah. part of the academy, okay. correct. I'm teaching them how to build their business credit, okay, number one. I teach them which banks to go to apply, right. okay. I also give them point of contacts on that bank, so all they need to do is look good in paper. Why? Right. It's like, for example, I mean, I don't know if it's a horrible uh, comparison, but for example, a girl. Right. Okay, a girl has 10 guys that are chasing her. She's like, mm, I'll text, I might like them, but I'll text them today, I'll text them tomorrow, mm, whatever. But if she likes a guy and that guy doesn't give her attention, she wanna talk to that guy. Right, right. You know, right. she's it's like, why not? Why? No, he has this, he's good looking, uh, he, he's doing well for himself. So that's what I compare to why. So we make, your business, okay, we teach you, hey, you gotta open it, you gotta prime it, we make you look good. And you just go to the bank, okay, and you tell them, yeah, I got this business, it's a startup, they're gonna check you out. Oh, what is, you know, they're gonna look at your credit score, your business credit score. Business credit score. Okay, mm, okay, he looks like a good candidate. So now you're not, you're not a, a C or B player, you're the A player. Right. They want your business. Okay, exactly. why? Because you have a business that's been open for 30 days, okay, that already has a business credit score. How do you build a business credit score? Well, I have 20 companies that are willing to lend you money, small amounts, right. okay, anywhere between $50 to $500, they lend you money, you pay back within seven days, pay back within 14 days, pay back within 20 days. What do these companies do? They report on your business credit. Okay, so now you have 20 companies that say, hey, you know what, Andres, he, I let him borrow money and he paid me back. Right, right, right. So now they're reporting. So now you graph that business, okay, with your personal business, with your personal credit score. You graph that business with your personal credit score. You go to my point of contact. Hey, right. talk to this guy. So we teach you how. We don't do it for you. It's we all teach relationship you how to do it. based, guys. Correct. So we teach you how to do it. It's very important who you know. Who you know, who you know. So you give them the contacts, okay? I give them the contacts, who to go to. Okay, these guys, they already know. That alone is worth whatever, I don't know how, you know, I don't know the specifics, so you're gonna go to the website and find out more information. Whatever it's worth, that's the shortcut right there. Who to talk to. Don't go through all, you know, the wrong places because then you're just gonna waste time and you might get less of a loan than what you could have with your contacts. Correct, I mean, and, and that's all, and I'm only giving you like, the rough. There's a lot of things that go into it. That, that go into it, as, right. as starting with the name of your business. So, for example, right now, 95% of banks in the U.S. you have Realty Arturo or Realty whatever. When you do your application, if you do it online, the algorithm catches it. Say, oh, it's real estate. Bank of America lost a hundred million dollars on real estate. We're not lending for real estate. Right. Oh, right now it's an inflation. We're not lending for real estate. Right. Okay. So, it starts with the name of your business. 
A okay. lot of technical. Correct. Things. A lot you of technical. Be, Why? You have to know. Exactly. Because when you do your application, when you do your application, you have to bypass it. You have to make sure somebody on the other side actually grabs it. You have to go into pending worst case scenario. Right. Okay. That's the first. That's the first step. Okay. I also teach them, hey, why, why are you only gonna go to one bank to get a loan? Stop. Okay? No, you go to nine fucking banks. Why nine banks? You know, United States, Experian, we have Experian, TransUnion, Aquifax, three credit bureaus, okay? Depending on the bank, they only pull, some of them pull all three, some of them only pull one. Why are you gonna go waste a hard, when you do it, they go check your credit, right? Yeah. That's called a hard inquiry. Why are you gonna go waste a hard inquiry from three creditors. No, we go to the bank that's only pulling Experian. So what, are, what leverage, when you know which bank pulls which credit bureau, right. now you have leverage. Why? You're only allowed three hard inquiries per six months, now that you push it back to a year. That means if you go and you apply for three banks and those three banks pull all three credit bureaus, you're fucked. Okay, so what do we do? Hey, this bank pulls only Experian. This bank pulls Experian, this bank pulls Experian, bam. Now you have three banks that only pull Experian, now you burn Experian. Then you go to Aquafax, you go to three other banks. TransUnion, three other banks. Now you have nine banks. Nine different applications. They don't know what the fuck you're doing. Right, right. You look like a fucking king on paper. Right. Okay. They give you anywhere between five and $25,000 per application. Okay, if you look and you structure the way we're teaching the people to do it. Okay, so now you go to nine different banks and that's in one business. I tell people, dude, open two business minimum. I have a guy, he opened six businesses, got 100,000 per business. You know, doing that, 600,000, doing that same <coughs> method. Three hard inquiries in, three hard inquiries in TransUnion, three in Aquavax, um, you know, and so on. So, if you know, okay, this took me many years. Right. Okay, people are like, Oh, Arturo, I used to charge 10 grand. That's when I started. I was right. charging $10,000. I went up to 20, I would charge 30 grand. Okay? Now, I also included a software that does the application for you. Oh, you know funny. what I'm saying? Now, I have a software where you do one application, this software, depending on your location, shops for banks, okay, around your location. Why? Because you cannot apply, for example, uh, California, uh, teachers Education Union, okay, right. that's, a, that's a bank. Right. You cannot have a business in Florida that's gonna fucking apply in California, exactly. what the fuck, you yeah. can't. Yeah. Okay, so it's, a, it's like a 60 mile radius. Okay, 60 mile radius, and I'll give you your people, whoever's watching, right. apply on a 60 mile radius, make sure your uh, business credit score is good, make sure your personal is good, you cannot, have, you cannot have more than three hard inquiries per credit bureau within the past six months. Okay, also your business name matters. Everything I'm telling you right now that I'm summarizing in, you know, two minutes right, right. is in detail in a five-hour course. Right. Okay, and I break, I break my course in uh, the first step is mindset, the, same, the second step is funding, the third step is, hey, this is how you find properties that have um, equity. Right. Okay, you can go and buy a $200,000 home that is 150 or whatever. So you're dealing, showing them what to do Correct. once they have, to have the capital. Once, exactly. once they have the capital. Once they have the capital, what so to do. You want to invest in real estate, right? Correct, yeah. So it's a program, and even though there's, a, there's technical, I can teach people the technical, right. but if they don't have the mindset, they won't do it, and I say with my students all the time. That's why I'm like, fuck that. I'm not dealing with people that are paying only 10. None of the people that are right. paying 20. Why? Because the more you spend, the more value you see in it. Exactly. You know, and I, I also give them a 100% money back guarantee. If you do everything, okay, and in a year, you don't have at least $100,000, you get your money back. I mean, my students are getting their money within 30 days. You know, so it's powerful. That's amazing. I mean, look, guys, all the information's out there. That's why the power of masterminds, a mentor, courses, traveling, right? We started this off with traveling, right? Getting out there and seeing what the world is, what the world has in store. Because if you stay in your mom's basement or you stay in the same neighborhood you grew up in with the same friends, doing the same things that you were doing in 2010, 2012, you're never going to progress anywhere. So, Arturo, man, you, it's been an amazing time here. I'm sure a lot of people are going to reach out to you. We're going to leave down all the links where you can contact him. And we hope to see you on top. We, we, we want to see people do well, right? That's why I want to bring on great guests, share information. That way we can all come hang out here in Colombia or in any other part of the world, right? It's fun when you can bring people along, when you have friends come visit you. 
and when you're around successful and like-minded people. So, guys, Arturo, hey, for sure, thanks so much. Of course. And I'll see you soon. Real estate. Sales. Marketing. Full Circle Conversations. Full Circle Conversations. With Andres Olaya.